All right, it's time. A lot of you have been waiting for a video on how to set up an email server. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Um, so it is that, uh, setting up an email server is actually a notoriously difficult process. But last year, I'm very glad I did this. Last year when I set up my own email server, it was very painful. Um, but once I finally figured it out, I actually sort of left a rope uh, for myself in that I wrote a script that did most of the work for you and installs the dependencies and configures them all together. Um, so I'm going to be using that in this, and you can, of course, as well. It's on my GitHub. Uh, but I also want to explain the logic of an email server and some stuff about it, okay? So um, what an email server usually in consists in uh, is a postfix server, which sends mail, a dovecot server, which receives mail. You have to configure them together. You got to make sure they're they're locking into with each other. You'll usually want spam assassin to keep you know get spam away, and I'll, we'll be installing that as well. And one of the biggest questions I get when uh, talking about email server or like let's say you have your own domain, a lot of people have the idea that oh if I just have some random domain. Uh, I might send mails to Google or something like Gmail uh, and uh, they might get blocked. So we're also going to set up OpenDKIM, which allows, it basically validates your domain and your email as legitimate. Um, and it's a way to, you know, so spam filters won't get you and stuff like that. Now, in order to do all this, you are going to need some kind of VPS. The script that I have made works on Debian and Ubuntu. I have tried it on both. Um, I, well, I've tried it on Vulture VPSs. Um, so I know some of you guys are using it because I, I did. So uh, it might work on if you have another VPS provider, Linode or uh, DigitalOcean, but I know they work for um, Vulture. Um, we are going to be creating a SSL certificate. Uh, that is, we want encrypted connection, duh, to our uh, server. So we'll be setting that up. Um, now, the first thing we want to do, though, is we want to actually set up some DNS records. Okay, so go to your registrar or wherever you set, you know, if you have a DNS server, you can open that. But uh, we're going to want to add some uh, DNS records. So here again, my website, uniboomer.com, looking at the DNS records. The big one is uh, you want to go make an MX record. And now an MX record is basically just the record. Oops. Did not mean to do that. It's the record that basically tells whoever's trying to email your domain where to look, you know, where to actually send your mail. So we're going to add an MX record. Uh, and uh, my face is like out of sync. That sort of annoys me. I don't know. It's been doing that a lot today. I'm not quite sure why. Um, so we are going to add an MX record. And basically, it doesn't just host, leave it blank. Uh, you can put uh, mail and then your site after it, and you want to, at the very end a trailing dot. Uh, that is if you're using Epic. Um, I, th I think other, other registrars don't necessarily require that. But um, uh, so if you go to, you also want to set up, so we're going to send all our, do all our email server basically is going to be at mail dot whatever, you know, your website. Um, so we're telling it to go there. And additionally, we're going to want to set up that subdomain as well. So you want to make a CNAME record for that. And this is more actually to figure out, this is more to make cert bot work, but um, we're gonna go ahead and make that. We're gonna make a CNAME domain um, for uh, mail, and we're gonna direct that to uniboomer.com with a trailing period once again. And for good measure, I'm just gonna put in www mail. Uh, I always do that, I always double up. Uh, putting in www's for my subdomains. Oh, I gotta remember that trailing period. Um, so once you have that, you can save that and you're done with your DNS records for now. We'll actually come back here. At the very end, we're gonna add some text records that have to do with DKIM so you can validate your emails and stuff like that. All right, so once you have that, uh, I'm gonna go over here. Uh, actually, maybe I'll bring my face because you know I always I feel lonely if I'm on a workspace alone. Uh, I am going to... Uh, log into my website. Okay, so now I'm here. Um, now, the script that I made, you can get it at this link right here. Okay, you can download it from my website, lukesmith.xyz slash emailwiz.sh. So let's do that. Okay, so uh, lukesmith.xyz slash emailwiz.sh. Okay. So now we're going to download that, but before we even run that, there's one more thing we want to do. We want to actually configure that subdomain so that it can take encrypted connections. So, you know, we, we want to use CertBot uh, to give it HTTPS and stuff like that. So let's do that first. Um, 
So how we want to do that, we want to create a dummy domain, a subdomain in Nginx. So if you remember from the videos before, Nginx, which is our web server, um, it keeps its available sites in Etsy slash Nginx slash sites available. Okay. I feel like my webcam is like off sync just so much today. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just imagining it. Um, but anyway, so in this folder, I've actually already created a file called mail. So I'm going to open this up and um, this is, you just want to create a file that looks like this. You can name it mail, you can name it whatever. Uh, so long as it has this kind of information, you want to listen on port 80. If you have IPv6, you want to have this line as well. You can give it just some random root directory. It doesn't actually matter where. Um, I, I'm just going to give it mail. We're not actually going to set up like a, a website at this location. It's just going to be a dummy website to get, uh, you know, our, our, uh, certificate. Um, and, but the important thing is your server name should be mail.whatever.com and www.mail. Okay. Now, once you have that, you can activate that site by taking that file and linking it. Uh, I'm going to link it, make a symbolic link from there to sites enabled. Okay. Once that happens, Nginx will treat that as a real site and we will tell um, we will reload Nginx. Okay. So once you do that, we can go ahead and get, uh, get SSL for that, get uh, encryption. We'll run that and it will ask what domains you want to do. I'm going to pick mail and www mail. That'll take a second, not too long. And it'll ask, do you want to redirect? Say yes. If you haven't run it before, of course, it'll ask you for your email and stuff and other things, but all right. So that should be done. Okay. So now let's test that. Uh, I always leaving my face behind. We should be able to go to mailuniboomer.com and you should get this. Yes, we got an error, but this is the correct error. You want to have like Nginx error. Uh, so just to be clear, if you typed in some random uh, letters and then typed a subdomain, it would have this. But what we want to see is this. Okay. And notice also up here, it says connection is secure. That means it, it worked. Uh, so great. We're basically halfway there. All right. So uh, the other half is more or less running the script that I made. Okay, so this script is going to install Postfix and Dovecot and configure them together. It's going to install Spam Assassin, everything else. Let me just go ahead and start it. It will start by uh, downloading some of these programs, and it's going to ask you. Oh yeah, this I think I already down downloaded them. Um, I just haven't installed them. So it's going to bring up a menu like this. Say Internet site. And then it's going to ask you, you for your uh, system mail name. Just put in your domain name, uniboomer.x.com. Um, don't put in mail before it. Just put in, you know, the, the clean domain. And so that should take a little bit of time. I'll probably stop this because it might take a little bit. Um, but what this is going to do, it's going to be installing. You can see what it's doing. It's installing Postfix and Dovecot and all the other things uh, it, that uh, are required. And actually in this script, maybe we can look at the script in the meantime. Um, ooh, email whiz. Yeah. Yeah, in this script, um, there's just a bunch of configuration that goes on that I make it do manually. It sets up like what your, your mailboxes are gonna look like, you know, what their name, drafts, junk, inbox, sent, trash. Archive, archive. Oh, I didn't even know I added that, but um, and then all this complex stuff. It was such a pain figuring out all this stuff and configuring them with Spam Assassin. But how it's going to work once this is done is you, whenever you create a user, actually we can go ahead and do this. We can go ahead and do this actually. Uh, so I'm going to log in uh, to my server. So now I'm going to have two instances in my server. Uh, it's apparently taking a while. I'll just, okay. So one thing, how you set up email accounts, or I mean, we can go ahead and start doing this. Oh, uh, you want to add users. Let's say I want uh, to be named Ted. Okay. I want the mail account Ted at uniboomer.com. Okay. What you can go ahead and do is say user add, and then you can say, you want to say M that means automatically create, create this user's home directory. You want to do capital G and that means this is a, group that this person's going to be added to and add mail. Uh, basically that means whenever you add a user to the mail group, that means that they are going to be able to, uh, you know, receive mail, send mail, stuff like that. 
And uh, Ted is the thing we're going to, the name we're going to give. Actually, I'm going to make the shell for this guy bin.bash. I think it's S for changing the shell. All right, that should work. Okay, so we went ahead and made him, and you'll also definitely want to give him a password. In fact, you need a password in order to be, uh, in order to log on. We will deal with that in a second. So I'm just going to make up a little password for him. Okay, now, okay, great, perfect. That's perfect timing because now it looks like our script is done. It's installed all the stuff we need, but there's still stuff we need to do. Okay, that's why there's this big now thing. Okay, so there are three text records that we have to add to our little text record tab over here on our DNS records. Um, so to be clear, these are also saved um, in my script. I think I saved them to like DNS. Yeah, they're saved to this file if you lose track of them. But um, so basically these are like DKIM. This first one is DKIM to validate your email uh, or yeah, to validate your domain and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and add this. Um, so you, uh, if you put it in manually, I think you have to include like the entire domain. I think I can get away with just including the subdomain if I, uh, let's see, add record. Uh, the host is going to be that subdomain. And then the text entry is going to be everything from V to the end of the line. This first one's going to be really, really long. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can just put that in there. Uh, then we're going to add two other ones. So we're going to add one for a DMARC. So these two are basically going to be, I don't know if you know this, but it's actually really easy to um, spoof emails. So these two things are to avoid, you know, basically to uh, prevent that from happening on your server. Uh, so I'm going to add that in and I'm going to add this last one in, uh, copy this, and hopefully this will all work. If it doesn't, I will fix it live and you will know what is happening. Okay, so I'm gonna save those. Uh, saving them. Okay, come on. Uh, in the meantime, I have actually taken the unusual step of, okay, should be saved. I've taken the unusual step of installing Thunderbird because now Thunderbird or any other mail application we can now use to uh, install, you know, basically log into our server, okay? Uh, now, of course, I usually use Mutt, but uh, we'll use Thunderbird because it's more, you know, normie friendly. Okay, so let's do this. So uh, we will just set up an email account and uh, I'm going to say my name is Ted. My email address is ted at uniboomer.com. My password, I'm going to put in my password. Okay, so it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, Thunderbird, I think, has some abilities to automatically guess what your mail information is. I'll go ahead and say that um, I actually chose very normal things for... Um, Basically, if you're using a program that requires you to put in like server information, this is going to be your server information. Uh, your SMTP port, again, that's for sending mail. That's going to be mail dot whatever your domain is. And the uh, port is going to be 587. That's typical. Uh, the IMAP server is going to be the same thing. Uh, and the port is going to be 993. And your username, this is actually important because you might get confused by this. Your username is going to be just the beginning. It's just going to be, you know, Luke instead of Luke at LukeSmith.xyz, right? Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, I think that work. We'll see if that works. I don't actually know how Thunderbird... Uh, Start TLS? No, I don't think it should be start TLS. I feel like that... Oh, well, anyway, we'll see if it works. It's not going to. All right, we'll, we'll do manual. It would have made a connection by now. Okay, this should be... Oh, yeah, this is done. All right, as I said, uh, IMAP should be 993. Um, and this should be uh, SSL. Wait, is it? Whatever. Yeah, 580, 587. Okay. SSL. Okay, maybe I'm, maybe I'm dumb. Uh, I'm just going to put 587. I don't know about that. Retest. Okay. We'll just uh, run with that. Let's see if that works. Okay, so I have an inbox. It seems to have logged in. Oh, and it's detecting all my mailboxes. So that, so that means there's stuff here. Um, so I'm going to log on to my other email address and I'm going to send email to this server to make sure it works. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so here is a test email. Okay, so again, we're sending to ted at uniboomer.com. Test email. Let's see if that works. It's going to send, hopefully, 
and it's gonna appear here in just a second. Let's see, is there a, ref a uh, refresh button? Oh, look at that, look at that, that's beautiful. So here's our mail, we can now receive mail. Now the big test is, can we, um, uh, can we like send mail to other places and you know, let's say Gmail, okay? Gmail is usually the hard one because they, uh, you know, they, they're very picky about DNS settings and stuff like that. So let's test this out. So I'm gonna send it to this Gmail account that I have. And I'm gonna say, uh, uh, let's see if OpenDKIM works. It's gonna be the title of our email. Let's see if this works. Best. Luke, no, we'll, we'll do Ted, okay. So I will send that. Now usually if you, um, if the mail is undeliverable, a lot of times you'll get an email back or something like, like that, not all the time. Um, so I am gonna log, I'm gonna, I guess I'll, let's see. I'll just pull up a private browsing window and go in here, log on to Gmail. Uh, first time I've used Gmail in a while. Oh, and here it is. So we have our email. Uh, got it from, uh, I don't know, the source we wanted. Let's see. Uh, it's standard encryption. Looks all Everything looks good. There's one additional test we can have. Or if you're having any problems, this is one of the things you can do. There are a couple sites out there. Gotta take my face. Uh, there are a couple sites out there, uh, like this one, that will actually test your DKIM settings or your SPF settings. We technically put in a record for that as well. So what you can do is they will give you a dummy email address. I'm gonna copy this email address. And we can send, if we wanna test, we can just send any old email to here. Okay, I'll just put whatever. And we'll send that. And they will tell you if there's anything wrong with your settings or something like that. So here we have the raw email right here. It's, uh, it's encrypted and all this stuff. That's as expected. Uh, and it says it passes SPF, passes DKIM. Something's going on with DMARC. Maybe it's still loading. Oh yeah, it's still loading. Let's hope it passes. Uh, again, like these settings are for, um, you know, making sure you don't, like people don't spam, or not spam, like spoof emails. It's actually really easy. Like you could just go and mutt and just change your from address and pretend you're emailing from someone authoritative. Uh, and of course, SPF and DMARC are to prevent that. Uh, I don't know why this is taking so long. Uh, actually, in the break, I tried it already and it was working. Okay, maybe, I'll, maybe we'll wait on that for a second. Um, in the meantime, so as I said, if you wanna add, if you wanna add a new mail user, you can always use user add. You wanna use M to add a new directory for them. Uh, G, capital G, I should say, uh, adds them to the mail group. And uh, you'll probably want to create a shell for them, you know, bin, uh, bash, and uh, just name them whatever. So let's name someone Billy, okay? And you'll definitely want to make a password for them as well. If you already have a user that you want to add to the mail group, because not all user... Uh, not all users will automatically have the ability to send and receive mail. You can say user mod a uh, a not m uh, capital G m, uh, mail and then say whatever the name is. So let's say you know Billy already exists and we want to add him to the mail group. We just run user mod and you know that'll do it. So that should work with that. Is this going to ever work? I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, so that should be about it. Um, if you have it, try it out for yourself. If anything goes wrong, uh, there you can open up an issue on the GitHub and stuff like that. Uh, but in general, I've been, you know, the the email that I'm using right now is run like I just installed it like last week. I had to reinstall my server, so this script works. I know a bunch of other people who have used it that it works. Uh, if anything goes wrong, though, be sure to evaluate what's going on. Uh, look at the source code and stuff like that. Um, and to be clear, the configuration files, I mean, this goes for pretty much any program on Linux, but uh, if you wanna look at system configuration, go to Etsy, and let's say you wanna look at Spam Assassin, okay? You wanna see what kind of rules you can make in Spam Assassin. You can look up uh, how to add new rules here. You can learn how to whitelist or blacklist particular things. Um, that's a, a good place to do it. Um, I, I think, I, I forget where exactly I add, um, like I have a script offline that adds, if, if I wanna block an address, it logs into my server and adds a line to Spam Assassin or something like that. Um, or same thing, if you wanna change postfix, uh, again, that's for sending mail. If you wanna change some custom settings, you can go into their 
uh, main configuration and change some things. But in general, like a lot of the, again, my script sort of makes everything fit together. Um, so just bear that in mind. If you change something, it might affect other things. Um, but yeah, so that's basically it. That's how you use it. And let's see if we're, okay. I'll check into what, why this is not loading. Okay. Uh, it's probably nothing though. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is just verification. The DMARC thing did work. I just sent another email. I think it was just a one-time glitch or something. I didn't change any other settings. Uh, so yeah, that, that should be fine. All right. Yeah, that's it.